Hola y bienvenidos a Norton Spanish Basics. I'm your host, Señor Norton, and today we are going to be talking about the verb tener and its use as tener que and other uses of, of el verbo tener. Okay, there are a couple of ways to say have in Spanish. The only one that we have used so far is the one that we are going to be reviewing today, tener. Now, many people say that tener looks nothing like any English words, but let's think about this for a minute. When a verb ends in ER in Spanish, then it is an infinitive verb, an infinitive form, which is like the to before an infinitive verb in English. Okay, so let's look at tener without its ER ending. We just have ten, T-E-N. This, by the way, is called the stem of the verb. The ten without the ER is called the stem. So ten is the stem for to have. Now think for a second, are there any words in English that have ten or ten sound and has something to do with to have? Think about this for a second. There are many, many English words with tain, T-A-I-N, in them, and many of those words have some sort of connection to to have. Though we don't talk about them having have in them, they are related. Here are a few with definitions that are slightly altered to make the point. So we have words like contain, contain, to have within, obtain, to acquire possession, have, retain, to maintain possession, also have, uh, there's a whole list of them. Abstain, to have not or withhold. Hopefully this little exercise has helped you to see the connection between the Spanish verb tener and its existence in English. If you are interested in this evolution of language and the history of words, then etymology is a word that you should look up. We also hope that this little exercise with tain will help you to remember always the meaning of today's word of the day. Tener. Okay, tener, to have, was one of the first irregular verbs that you learned in Spanish 1. The reason we call it an irregular verb is because it does not conjugate according to the regular pattern used for most verbs. Two strange things happen to it. First, it is what some teachers call a go verb, meaning that the yo form doesn't just add an o, but rather a go, a go. Second, it is a stem-changing verb. What that means is that the stem, ten, has a spelling change from e to ie in several of the forms. Observe some of these changes here. We've got tengo, okay, that's the go part, yo tengo. Tu tienes, tienes, it goes from tener to tienes, e goes to ie. El, ella, usted, tiene. Nosotros, tenemos. Vosotros, tenéis. Ellos, ellas, ustedes, tienen. Let's take a look at these real quick. Tenemos and tenéis don't stem change. Tienes, tú tienes, él tiene, ella tiene, usted tiene, ellos tienen, ellas tienen, ustedes tienen. They all stem change. That's why uh, some teachers call these boot verbs, is because the ones that stem change follow the shape of a boot. Uh, I tend to just call them stem changing verbs. But the go verb... The yo with the go, uh, when we have that, we don't have it, the stem changing going on up there. Okay, so just something to consider. So maybe uh, maybe not boots, maybe more like high tops or ankle high shoes. I don't know if you're into that kind of uh, analogy of, of stem changing verbs. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about tener for possession. Okay, so the verb tener, as we discussed, is used when we are telling somebody that we have possession of something. Yo tengo dos bicicletas. I have two bicycles. Yo tengo, I have, dos bicicletas. Yo tengo dos bicicletas. Nosotros tenemos todos los libros. Nosotros tenemos todos los libros. We have all the books. Okay, the verb tener is also used in other situations that may not sound right if we were to translate them directly into English. When was the last time, for example, that somebody said to you, I have hunger? You would know what the person means, but it's simply not how we use to have in English. So we do use to have in other situations besides just physical possession to have something, and that's what we're going to talk about now. First, tener que. Tener que. In English, it's like the to have to. 
So there are several other uses of tener, like I mentioned, that may not seem normal for English speakers. Perhaps the most common of these is the tener que structure. This is very similar to have to in English. If you were to translate it directly into English, it may sound odd. Remember, though, that for a Spanish speaker to translate have to into Spanish, it may sound equally odd to them. So let's look at a few examples. Sandra tiene que hablar con el director de la escuela. Sandra tiene que hablar con el director de la escuela. Sandra has to hablar con el director de la escuela. Sandra tiene que hablar con el director. Yo tengo que ir a la casa de mis primos. Yo tengo que ir a la casa de mis primos. Yo tengo que ir a la casa de mis primos. I have to go to the house of my cousins. Now notice that tengo que is conjugated, so the next verb is not. I have to go. Not I have to, I go. Just I have to go. Tengo que ir. Okay, besides tener que, we also have tener plus noun. Okay, so besides being used to declare possession of something, physically having it, and besides using tener with que to talk about have to, there's a third set of occasions that tener is the verb of choice. In these instances, we are combining tener with certain nouns that would normally go with to be in English. There aren't too many instances of this, and, and we will review the main ones here. There are others, but these are just the main ones that you'll be seeing in Spanish too here. Okay, in English we might say, I am hot. You know, it's a hot day, it's sunny out, I am hot. In Spanish, though, that sounds a little weird to say, I physically am hot. It's a part of your being, it just doesn't make sense. So instead what we want to say is, I have heat. Like, heat is affecting me, I have heat. Tener calor. Tener calor. To have hot or to be hot. Ella tiene calor y quiere nadar en la piscina. She is hot and wants to swim in the pool. Ella tiene calor y quiere nadar en la piscina. Okay, another one. Tener frío. To have cold or to be cold. Yo tengo frío. Necesito un suéter. Yo tengo frío. Necesito un suéter. I am cold. I need a sweater. Yo tengo frío. Necesito un suéter. Tener hambre. To have hunger or to be hungry. Mi amigo va a comer porque tiene hambre. Mi amigo va a comer porque tiene hambre. My friend is going to eat because he has hunger. Mi amigo va a comer porque tiene hambre. Now, John Wayne might bother a few Spanish speakers when he says, Hey, hombre. When he's talking to a man, that's hombre. Hombre is man. Hambre is hunger. Okay, similarly, we have tener sed. To have thirst or to be thirsty. Hace calor hoy y tengo mucha sed. Hace calor hoy y tengo mucha sed. It's hot today and I have much thirst. I'm very thirsty. Hace calor hoy y tengo mucha sed. Okay, just two more here. Tener sueño. Tener sueño. To have sleepiness or to be tired. El bebé tiene sueño. El bebé tiene sueño. The baby has sleepiness or is tired. El bebé tiene sueño. And let's do tener miedo. To have fear or to be scared. Tener miedo. M-I-E-D-O. As a little note here, tener miedo de, when with a verb, Stephen tiene miedo de hablar el español. Stephen tiene miedo de hablar el español. Notice we said, tiene miedo de, because we've got a verb coming after it. Or, we have tener miedo a, when with a noun. Silvia y Marta tienen miedo a los perros. Silvia y Marta tienen miedo a los perros. Silvia and Marta are afraid of dogs. Silvia y Marta tienen miedo a los perros. Okay, once again, so... Um, those two examples again. Steven tiene miedo de hablar el español. Silvia y Marta tienen miedo a los perros. Okay, so I've got a group of sample sentences here for you. I want you to listen along, try to get an idea of what it means. I'll read it two times. And then after I read it the third time, try to repeat back some of it. Uh, 
try to say it out loud thinking about what it means. Okay? So basically I'll read it three times then give you a space for you to repeat it. Yo tengo cuatro hermanas y también tengo un perro. Yo tengo cuatro hermanas y también tengo un perro. Yo tengo cuatro hermanas y también tengo un perro. Okay, next one. Nosotros tenemos una piñata y muchos globos para la fiesta. Nosotros tenemos una piñata y muchos globos para la fiesta. Nosotros tenemos una piñata y muchos globos para la fiesta. Okay, here's the third one. Mariana tiene la cámara para sacar fotos de los monos y los pájaros en el Parque Nacional. I know that was a long one, but I want to push you on this one. Mariana tiene la cámara para sacar fotos de los monos y los pájaros en el Parque Nacional. Mariana tiene la cámara para sacar fotos de los monos y los pájaros en el Parque Nacional. Fourth one. Los jóvenes tienen hambre y quieren ir a un restaurante. Los jóvenes tienen hambre y quieren ir a un restaurante. Los jóvenes tienen hambre y quieren ir a un restaurante. Ellos no duermen mucho y ahora tienen sueño. Ellos no duermen mucho y ahora tienen sueño. Ellos no duermen mucho y ahora tienen sueño. Yo tengo miedo a los serpientes. Serpientes or serpents or snakes. Vibras, there are other words for it. Serpientes is what we we'll use here. Yo tengo miedo a los serpientes. Yo tengo miedo a los serpientes. ¿Tienen ustedes mucho frío? Yo tengo calor. ¿Tienen ustedes mucho frío? Yo tengo calor. ¿Tienen ustedes mucho frío? Yo tengo calor. Hace calor y nosotros tenemos sed. Queremos agua. Hace calor y nosotros tenemos sed. Queremos agua. Hace calor y nosotros tenemos sed. Queremos agua. José no puede ir al cine. Él tiene que trabajar esta noche. José no puede ir al cine. Él tiene que trabajar esta noche. José no puede ir al cine. Él tiene que trabajar esta noche. Well, that wraps up today's review of the verb tener and some of its different uses. Hope you found this one helpful for you. Also, if you need to uh, see those sentences, if you want to see those sentences written down or see some translations for them, check out the show notes. Also, if you do subscribe to this via iTunes, I would appreciate if you would leave some feedback in, um, in the iTunes store. Uh, let me know what you think of these podcasts. Let me know if it's something that I should continue doing. Uh, have a great day. Espero que hayan aprendido mucho. Uh, ahora, yo tengo que irme. Tengo que ir. I have to go. There's your little use of the verb tener right there at the end. Recuerden, keep practicing y aprendan mucho. Adiós.